Hi guys, BJ Wimpy here. So recently, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, David Displays Model Behavior, did a question and answer video. And I really enjoyed it, getting to, to hear some questions about him. A lot of his stuff has to do with uh, action figures and everything, and so there was a lot of action figure questions, which I thought was great. If you haven't yet, go check out David Displays Model Behavior. I'll link him in the description below. But I thought I would do the same thing. So here on YouTube, I reached out through my community and I just put out the question. Here, I'll even read it to you, what I said. I said, I want to do a Q&A video. Ask me all the questions you have about me, my costume, the makeup, etc., and I will uh, make a video answering all of them that I can. And so that's what this video is. Um, I got 63 questions. So this might be a little bit of a long video, but I'm going to do my best to answer all of them as best I can. So I hope you guys enjoy. Follow along and let's do this. Danae M. What are people's reactions when you walk into a store fully dressed as Palpatine? Now this one's kind of funny because a lot of people think like I get really good reactions and they always ask me to do videos where I am like out and about in public and recording people's reactions. The problem is most people don't react. They act like what they're seeing is just completely normal, that they see the emperor walking around the store every single day or whatever. Very rarely does someone react. I've seen people, you know, like see me and like turn around and walk the other way. I have a few people who get excited and want to take pictures, but for the most part, people just ignore it. They act like I'm not there. They're probably just used to people doing stuff for reactions for videos, just like this one. So they don't really react. Uh, Joey M asked, are you annoyed if people start their question by saying question and end it with a question mark? Nope, doesn't annoy me at all. I, I don't know what to tell you. The Mandarin asks, how did you get the idea to do these videos anyway? It's very creative. Um, I've been doing Emperor Palpatine since 2007. And I have a lot of fun interactions. I have a lot of fun stuff on video from different cons and everything like that. So um, my very first video on here was just me reading a story. And that was during lockdown, during the whole coronavirus thing. The 501st, which I'm a member of, they asked us to do, to do stuff like that. And it would count as an event for the year. But then also like it was a way to help continue spreading the joy that we do with the 501st. So I just recorded myself reading a little golden book. A video and that's how and then you know like like one of my most popular ones on here is the stay on target video and that's actually an old video we were we had just done an event for the 501st Sean who's my makeup artist had to stop at target so I stopped with him and I picked up a few things while I was there and when I was leaving I noticed that Sean was filming me and so I just looked at him and as in Palpatine's voice I said stay on target stay on target and that became one of my most popular videos and so like a lot of the videos are just in the moment. Um, my unlimited power cables video, that was the same way. I was just there at that same target. And I said, oh, hey, Sean, film this. Because I just saw the power cable things there. And so I thought it'd be funny to do unlimited power cables. Um, now that we've started doing videos regularly, we actually have a list on our refrigerator that whenever like an idea pops into our head, like the whole like opening the door with the force and like still got it. Um, it was just an idea we had one day, so I wrote it down. So the next time I get into makeup, we can do it. And that's where those come from. I've gotten suggestions from friends that I know personally, from people here on YouTube, from people on TikTok, Instagram. And if I think it's a good idea, I'm going to do it. Ray BR says, What is the sweetest or just your favorite interaction with a fan or person when filming a few of your videos? All right. This uh, was not necessarily when I was filming a video. It's one of those things where I wish it was on film. I was at Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Uh, it was near the end of the day. I was heading back to my hotel room, I believe. And I was going down an escalator and several groups behind me, a family got on the escalator as well, going down. And they had a little girl with them and she was so excited to see the Emperor on the escalator. And so she just started like, like Emperor Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine and like waving. So I turned around and I waved at her and she's like, hi, hi, Emperor Palpatine. So I waved again. And so I thought, okay, you know, I got to the bottom of the escalator. I stepped to the side and I waited for them. They came down and I started to have a little interaction with her. Like, greetings, young one. How are you? And she's like, oh, I'm good. Uh, she told me her name, but I don't remember it. But she was just adorable. 
and she had a little like stuffed tauntaun with her and she was so cute and we were just talking about the day and Star Wars and I asked her how her day was going and she said just trying to be the best tauntaun mom I can be which I thought was just adorable and um I made the joke to her I'm like do you know what the inside temperature of a tauntaun is and she's like no and I said it's lukewarm and her parents and like a lot of people that had stopped and were watching us all laughed because, you know, it's a joke. What's the internal temperature of a tauntaun? Lukewarm. But so she looked around at everyone laughing and then she laughed too. She's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. That's so funny. She clearly didn't get it. But I told her, like, when you're older, you'll think that's hilarious. But it was just a, such a sweet interaction. And eventually her father, you know, he's like, honey, the emperor has to go. Come on, we got to go. But we talked for at least five or six minutes, like five or ten minutes. It was so cute. And she was just so sweet and wholesome and so excited to see the Emperor and not scared at all. Which, you know, a lot of people get, uh, little kids especially, they get scared when they see the Emperor. So it was great. And that's probably my favorite interaction. W for Will, 1763. How do you feel about Darth Vader tossing you into that shaft? I mean, I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> but then again, it wasn't necessarily me. I'm just a cosplayer. Um, but yeah, the, the shaft here on, on the Death Star too, right? But no, like it was, it extended the story, you know, Palpatine, uh, uh, right, was there, you know, electrocuting Luke and Vader decided that no, he was done with this, that he had watched too many people that he loved die. And so he picked up Palpatine and got, got rid of him as, th as far as he knew. But yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. It's rainbow, Steve. Uh, your question is. Have you ever role-played as someone who is not from Star Wars? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Let me think of some costumes. I do a Netflix Daredevil. I have that costume. I've also done Elvis Presley and Captain America. And the Joker. I have my own version of the Joker that has some pretty awesome makeup as well. I'll have to put it on and do some videos one day. Um... Uh, werewolf, uh, Frankenstein from Penny Dreadful, all sorts of, uh, Frankenstein's monster, excuse me, from Penny Dreadful, but all sorts of things. And I love cosplay and role-playing, and I will gladly dress up as anything. Um, I really want to do a Robocop, like a classic 80s Robocop, I think would be mm, chef's kiss. So hopefully I'll get that one day. Uh, but yeah, always looking for more costumes. And my list for like costumes I want to do just keeps getting longer and longer. So just dealing with that. Cave Central says, how do you get the Emperor's voice and laugh to nearly match Ian McDermott? It's incredible. First, Cade, thank you so much for the compliment. Second, a lot of practice. Like I said earlier in the video, I've been doing Emperor Palpatine since 2007. That's when I first started doing Palpatine. And my voice has improved over time, especially. And my laugh, I feel like I really have the laugh very good. But it's just try and trial and error. You gotta listen to how Ian McDermott talks in the movies and how the Emperor, you know, talks in other media as well and just go for that. Something I do want to point out here, I don't always do an Ian McDermott Palpatine. Like, sometimes I do, and actually quite frequently I do an Ian McDermott Palpatine. But there are times where, um, one of the things I love about Palpatine is that he can go from, like, the movie, very serious, very scary, like, Palpatine with the, like, the Ian McDermott voice... And then, like, you know, uh, 180, you can do the crazy Seth Green, um, like, robot chicken, or, like, the Lego Star Wars Palpatine, or all sorts of other crazy Palpatines, which, you know, the Ian McDermott is much deeper and longer sort of thing when you do the voice. But then when, like, the robot chicken is much more like this, huh? Uh, I'm a, ha! Huh? I'm Emperor Palpatine, eh? And so it's just fun, like, to be able to do all of it. And in between, and Palpatine is such a fun character to be able just to goof off and do stuff like that. So, yeah, thank you for Shaggy asking. Ultra 69. Oh, my. He says, question, when and how did you get into Star Wars? Very good question. I was, I think, eight or nine. I don't remember exactly. And it was Halloween, like the day before Halloween. Now, my mother, she's a wonderful seamstress, and she used to sew all of our costumes for Halloween and stuff like that. But for some reason that year, she didn't get mine done. And I don't remember why, and I don't even remember what I was being that year, but she didn't get my costume done. So my mother took me to the store and she said I could pick out any costume I wanted because she wasn't gonna get my costume done. And you know, being the night before Halloween, 
back in the early 90s, you know, like it was really picked through. Halloween is not what it is now, like when it comes to like the costume selection. And so they didn't have a lot left. They had like a, a Dracula that was missing the fangs because I had a little package for like the fangs, but the fangs were gone. They had a Frankenstein's monster, I think a firefighter. Um, and then they had a Darth Vader. And my mother like pulled the costume off the rack and she said, look, Darth Vader, like, don't you want to be Darth Vader? And I looked at her and I said, who's Darth Vader? And she was surprised that I didn't know who Darth Vader was. Um, but she told me like, oh, and you know, like he's from Star Wars and he's like, and she said, he's like a robot and he's, he's the bad guy and he has a sword, it's a, you know, a laser. And my mother is not into Star Wars at all. She, yeah, she does not like it. But so that's how that's what she, how she described Darth Vader. And like looking at the picture and like looking at the costume, I, I as a little kid, I'm like, yeah, okay, he looks cool. Sure, I'll be Darth Vader. And so I was Darth Vader for Halloween. And I remember when we went home, she told my dad, you know, like BJ doesn't know who Darth Vader is. And my dad said that he felt like a like a failure as a parent because his son did not know who Darth Vader was. So um, I think it was just about. November, so pretty close to, to Thanksgiving, I believe. We sat down one weekend and we watched Star Wars, A New Hope. And from that opening scrawl to when you saw the Star Destroyer come over to the very, you know, to the credits rolling, I was like on the edge of my seat. I was so enthralled and I got to so finally see Darth Vader and he was more impressive than I even thought. And, and from that moment, like that excitement is still there and I love Star Wars because of it. And so that's how I got into Star Wars. Thank you for asking. I like that. Kenny SFDG, what is a quote someone you know said that has never left you in a positive way? Oh, I like that. Let's see. Um, actually, when I was when I was in college, I got to portray Will Rogers in the Will Rogers Follies. It was a musical, and Will Rogers, it's a uh, he's a real life person. Well, he used to be. Um, it's a it's a musical that's based on his life and it's getting to learn about Will Rogers actually you know there's so many quotes but one of his quotes is that I never met a man I didn't like and that's about how no matter how different you are like if you just look at people as people and accept them for who they are and their faults and that they're just trying to do the best they can you can find you know, equal ground with people and you can find good things about anyone. And so that quote, I never met a man I didn't like, um, it's always stuck with me. And I always try to think about that. Like when I meet someone, I don't like them. Or when I, when something's annoying me about someone, I try to think, you know, like, you know, what's it like for them? What's it like inside their skin? And, and what's their, their world like and their life like? And can we relate on anything? And I find that most people I've ever met, I can relate on some level or another. We can connect about something and talk and, and leave each other being better people than when we met each other. And I try to do that as often as possible. I, I will admit sometimes it's hard, but just trying to know that you're doing the best you can and they're doing the best you can. So yeah, that's a quote that's always stuck with me. I never met a man I didn't like. What is your favorite quote from Palpatine? Ooh, this one's harder. Um, oh, that's hard. Like now, only and now the end. Do you understand? Or uh, crap, do it. Of course, is a fun one. Roll it again. That's a fun one. That's not necessarily Palpatine, but that's Ian McDermott. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I love the way that he does like. I'm afraid your friends will find this battle station quite operational when they arrive. Not battle station, shield generator. Um, that's probably a good one. I love the way that Ian McDermott does the... He goes very slowly and quite operational. Like, I love it. It's great. So that's probably one of my favorite quotes. Let's see. Serious question. Can you tell me how to do the Palpatine voice properly? Because I need to learn it for a trailer of my Star Wars fan fiction. Number one, cool that you're doing a Star Wars fan fiction. Can't wait to see it. 
love love seeing people's fan fan films and all that and fan fiction. Um, for Palpatine, like I said, it's a lot of practice. So listen, listen to what Ian McDermott does and try and mimic that, of course. And then once you get a flow, then it's pretty easier. One thing, um, uh, I always, I keep the edges of my mouth very tight. You'll probably notice when I do the voice that I, I pull them tight here and I keep them tight here. And same with the laugh. It's, <laughs> it's very tight in the edge of your, the, like, pull this tight and it, it keeps the voice down here. So that might help you a little bit. Also, you know, there is a little bit of, you know, right here in the very top of the throat. Um, don't be careful about that. You don't want to hurt yourself. So be slow, take your time, um, and just figure out how Palpatine's voice sits on your voice. And, and yeah, hopefully that helps. Sorry if that's not what you're looking for. Um, what is your favorite Star Wars movie? If uh, that has already been asked, who is your favorite Star Wars character besides Palpatine? Uh, favorite Star Wars movie is hard. I have a very hard time picking a favorite Star Wars movie. I always say my favorite Star Wars movie is the Star Wars movie I'm currently watching. All Star Wars movies are great. I love them. There has not been one Star Wars movie or TV series that I've been like, meh. I've really enjoyed all of them. It's kind of like my quote, you never met a man I didn't like, never saw a Star Wars film I didn't like. Do I have ones that are like, like, I don't know, like things are popping out in my head. I'm like, ooh, like Revenge of the Sith. Or, ooh, Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, The Last Jedi even. Like there are things in all of them that pop out to me and I really like. And favorite Star Wars character, Palpatine is not my favorite Star Wars character. Love Palpatine. I have so much fun as Palpatine. Not my favorite character. My favorite character, oh, and this was, by the way, this was, uh, that video game nerd. And the previous one about Palpatine's voice is Palpatine the Senate hog. That's a funny name. Uh, my favorite character, probably Luke Skywalker. I mean, I grew up looking up to him. Han Solo, of course. Uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Man, like that's it's hard to pick a favorite Star Wars character, too. Yeah, I like Star Wars. Oscar Tamiz or Tamiz. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I'm not. Oscar Thomas, Tamez. Will you be involved in more fan films like The Mandalorian Film by Brad Kendrick? I hope so. Um, I've actually been involved in a few uh, Star Wars fan films and other Star Wars projects. But the one by Brad Kendrick was probably the most just like theatrical that I've done. I get, Oh, I did Legacy of the Force. Um, I was a, a, a New Republic guard in that, which was fun. But man, this one with Brad Kendrick, if you haven't watched it, it's called The Mandalorian Chapter 16.5 by Brad Kendrick. I was able to be the voice of Grand Admiral Thrawn, as well as some stormtroopers. And then at the very end, if you go to the post credit scene, you can see me as my signature Sith Lord. Um, but I hope I'm involved in many, many more. I, I would love to be. If you know anyone looking, let me know. Sarah, she says... What's your favorite movie from the original trilogy? Ooh, this is hard as well, man. For watchability, I would say Star Wars, just the very first one, Star Wars A New Hope. But growing up especially, like Return of the Jedi was my jam, yo. Well, number one, Palpatine got introduced. I mean, like, he got introduced a little bit in Empire, but like you really got to meet Palpatine in Return of the Jedi. The battles in it are great. Like, the final duel is good. Even, like, all the stuff with the Ewoks, which I know a lot of people don't like. As a kid, I loved. You know, that's what the Ewoks are there for, though, right? So, but then Empire is just classic and has that beautiful, like, cliffhanger ending. Man, there's so many. There's so many. Ha! Ha! Ah, ah. All three of them are my favorite from the original trilogy. <laughs> I know this is not what you guys want, but... That's my answer. Thomas P. Lopez. Did you pick to dress up as Emperor Palpatine or did someone else choose it for you? Very good question. And someone else chose it for me. Um, when I was joining the 501st, my friend and makeup artist, Sean Gordon, um, who he does my Palpatine makeup to this day, he does my Palpatine makeup every time I put it on. But um, oh, I was looking for a costume to do and... I live in Utah. I'm in the Alpine Garrison. And at the time, we had had an Emperor Palpatine. But for one reason or another, he was no longer part of the 501st and wasn't active anymore. 
and Sean said to me, you know, a Palpatine would be really cool. Like having Palpatine in the event is way awesome. And he's like, and I'll do your makeup and it'll be great. And so I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I like Palpatine. He's a, he's a great bad guy. Why not? So I had my original robe made by my friend Carol, and Sean did my makeup, and that's when I started being Palpatine. That was back in 2007. And since then, I've gone through three different robes, different designs to get more and more accurate. Sean's redone the makeup, I think, three different times. This is the third, third iteration of the makeup that I'm currently doing. And yeah. That's how I started doing Palpatine. Sean just said, hey, we could use a Palpatine. He's fun to have at an event. And I've been doing it ever since. And I, I fell in love with the character even more. And so it's great. Aga Fox. How do you come back to life after Vader threw you in the Death Star Reactor Core? Well, the dark side is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. That's how. Um, I believe the canon explanation is cloning and just soul transfer using the Force, different things like that. Misty Mobile. Have you tried to do any other Star Wars voices other than Admiral Thrawn in the Mandalorian remake? Uh, it wasn't necessarily a remake, it was a continuation. Uh, yes, I, I've done C-3PO for some things. Um, Palpatine, obviously. I'm working on a Cassian Andor, because that's a costume I want to do. Also working on... Uh, a uh, Din 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 Djarin? Din Djarin? I forgot how to pronounce his name. The Mandalorian, working on one of his costumes, and so doing that voice. I love how Pedro Pascal explains the Mandalorian voice. He always said it was like, like a bedroom voice, you know, like you, you know, mm. just imagine yourself saying something kind of sexy, and then that's that's where you get the. You, um, I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Mm. I don't know, but yeah, uh, let's see, I've done, I've done a lot. I've done 2-1-B, um, 99, um, K-2-S-O, uh, Cassie and Andor, like, like, yeah, like, there's a lot of them that I've, I mean, I've done Yoda, Mace Windu, uh, Luke Skywalker, all in passing, really. I haven't, like, sat down and, like, really worked on voices. I need to do that. I definitely want to do a D. Bradley Baker clone voice like get that worked out so that's good maybe a tomorrow morrison you know boba fett kind of voice but but yeah i love doing voices and i love doing star wars voices dasher does the emperor voice come out in your everyday life also who's your second favorite character slash person person to imitate ah uh, okay no i wouldn't say the palpatine comes out just like just like, pops out unexpectedly i do find myself doing it like whenever whenever it's appropriate whenever i say do it i constantly go do it but it's not like it just pops out it's a conscious decision i i've made to make that voice to say do it um you know like good <laughs> i'll do that all the time but again i know that i'm doing it it's not just popping out and what's my second favorite to imitate my second favorite to imitate Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I do Obi-Wan Kenobi quite a bit, or even Sean Connery. I do him a lot. Uh, I never really thought what, what about it. So good question. I may have to get back to you, Dasher. So there's a lot more questions than I thought, everyone. This is taking a really long time. So I'm going to have to do a part two. I hope you've enjoyed your answers so far. I hope you've liked them and that it helps. Um, keep sending them, I guess. I'll answer as many as I can still. But this is going to be the end of part one. I will definitely be doing a part two and maybe even a part three with how many questions there are. But thank you so much for joining and may the force be with you.